folks! Welcome back to our channel where we talk about work, life, travel and how to balance it all. As you might have guessed from our previous videos, we've been living and working in Mexico for several months. In this video, we would like to share with you our experience of living in different neighborhoods or as they're called, colonias, important word to remember, colonias of Mexico City and which ones we found the most compatible for balancing work and leisure. Watch till the end of this video to hear our tips on how to find the best place to live in Mexico City. Mexico City is the biggest city in Mexico, the capital, the cultural and financial center. It is the oldest capital city in all Americas and one of the two founded by indigenous peoples. It is located in the valley in the high plateau surrounded by volcanoes at the altitude of 2240 meters above the sea level. It was founded by the Aztecs in the 14th century and was essentially built over a lake, Lago de Taxoco. Aztecs built an artificial island and gradually expanded it by dumping soil in the lagoon. Later, the Spaniards erected the second Mexico City atop the ruins of Tenochtitlan. This unique origin has affected the architectural look of the city, especially the center. In the center, you can notice multiple buildings being tilted or even collapsing during the soil slides caused by the groundwaters and the volcanic activities. <laughs> you will see the list of our neighborhoods in Mexico City that we ranked in the order from our least favorite to the most favorite. Wait till the end of this video to see a bonus. The neighborhood that we didn't live in this time but found to be the most walkable, enjoyable and appealing. As we mentioned already, Centro, this is one of the neighborhoods in Mexico City. Municipal areas are called colonias or areas in English. So Colonia Centro is the historic center of Mexico City with the Constitution Square Cathedral and multiple museums. neighborhood on our list. Intuitively, this would be an area of interest to most travelers, but it's actually not the best place to live in Mexico City. There are several hotels that face Constitution Square, but other than that, Centro is not considered to be a safe area. Due to the fact that there are so many tourist attractions and hence the tourists, small crimes like pickpocketing are flourishing here. We were advised by our hosts not to have our cell phones out on the streets in Centro and to be very mindful of our surroundings. We actually stayed in the Airbnb in Centro in the last four weeks of our trip. We noticed that during the day it was very lively and active, but in the evening it becomes a little empty. safe walking in this area at night, so most of the time we had to take an Uber after hours. Uber in Mexico City is quite affordable, but at the end of the day the cost adds up. When we checked our Uber expenses for these four weeks, we realized that even though we spent on cheaper Airbnb in this area, we actually spent even more on Uber. We lived in two bedroom, two bathroom Airbnb in Centro, which cost us almost 2000 Canadian dollars for a month. probably recommend staying in Centro only if you're visiting Mexico City for several days and want to see all the main attractions. Otherwise, keep watching this video to see the next neighborhood on our list. And the next one is San Rafael. This is up-and-coming neighborhood close to Centro and Reforma. We only stayed there for one week. It has a vibe of an old Mexico City with authentic buildings and little shops and businesses around. Mildly, and it has several new condo buildings in this area. They aim to meet the standards of other US and Canadian cities. The condo that we lived in has amenities like rooftop patio space, gym, lobby, and so on. 
Our Airbnb had one bedroom and one bathroom. We paid around 720 Canadian dollars for one week. And it was a last minute booking. This neighborhood is safer than Centro and it was close walking distance to Reforma. Even though it took about 30 to 45 minutes to get to other neighborhoods like Roma. I found a nice co-working space in the neighborhood. We've mentioned it in our review of Mexico City co-working spaces, so go check it out if you plan to work during your trip. Overall, we found San Rafael to be a bit remote from main activities and not as walkable as we would have wanted. Even though the proximity to Reforma is a good benefit of this area, especially if you come here for business and need access to financial district. Next on our list is Juarez. This was our first Airbnb in Mexico City and we loved its location, right next to Chapultepec Park, just a couple of minutes away from Reforma, close driving distance from Polanco and walking distance to Roma and Condesa. And there are plenty of attractions in Juarez, like Koreatown, Gay Village. We loved the walkability of this area and we felt safe there. This is a nice area and we would strongly recommend considering for your accommodation. Our Airbnb was a one bedroom, one bathroom apartment and cost us 1100 Canadian dollars for two weeks. One thing worth mentioning, Hamburgo is a very lively street with a lot of clubs, so be mindful of this when choosing your accommodation. Parties in Mexico City go on till the sunrise. is Palanco. Palanco is an upscale neighborhood home to Humex and Samaya museums and malls with international brands. We found it a bit too posh and not very distinctive from any other international cities. When you're in Polanco, it doesn't make you feel like you're in Mexico City. And that's something that we didn't like. It looked too basic and not too authentic. And not to mention one of the most expensive neighborhoods to live in. One week would cost you at least 1,000 Canadian dollars. San Miguel Chapultepec one of our favorite Airbnbs. This is a quiet residential area close to Chapultepec Park. We really liked that this area was relatively central and yet green and peaceful. I went for a lovely run in the park during my lunch breaks. We could also go to one of the cozy cafes to enjoy coffee and the afternoon sun. This area also has several art galleries, as well as two buildings by famous Mexican architect Luis Barragan, his own house, Casa Barragan, and the house that he designed later in his career called Casa Giraldi. If you are interested in visiting these houses, they give tours there, but make sure to book in advance. They are very, very popular and tickets sell out several weeks in advance. There are also multiple galleries that you can visit there and there was another right in front of our building. This is a very cultured district with modern residential buildings and some older ones that were converted to more modern. We were lucky to get a spacious two-bedroom, two-bathroom apartments and plenty of space. The host even installed high-speed internet as we both worked remotely. We even shot some of our favorite videos at this Airbnb. Maybe you know which ones those are. Let us know in the comments below if any of these ring a bell. This great finding cost us 1700 Canadian dollars for four weeks, which was the best value for money that we had during our trip to Mexico City. Overall, San Miguel Chapultepec is a very nice and safe area, but walking to Condesa took us about 15 to 20 minutes. Next one on the list, Colonia Roma. There is a division into southern and northern areas, so you would see Roma Notre and Roma Sur. Roma Sur is the older neighborhood with a lot of art, street food, markets and early 20th century architecture. If you watched an Oscar winning movie called Roma, it was actually filmed exactly here in Roma Sur. One week accommodation here would cost you about 600 Canadian dollars. Roma Norte is one of the most buzzing neighborhoods in Mexico City. Hipsters love it. You will find plenty of bars, restaurants and markets like Mercado Roma. 
The busiest street is called Avenida Alvaro Obregón and I think we spent half of our time there. One week here would cost you about 700 Canadian dollars. Next on our list, and we are almost wrapping up here, Colonia Condesa, one of our favorites. The location provides proximity to all of the above mentioned, Roma, Juarez, Chapultepec and Reforma. It has quiet streets and plenty of sidewalk cafes and restaurants. It is very walkable and it is safe in any time of the day. Park España has a musical garden and little pond and a lot of centennial trees. Candesa gives you this European vibe and the architecture is predominantly Art Nouveau and Art Deco apartment buildings. For one week here, you will pay at least a thousand dollars Canadian. And we saved the best for the last. A little area within Colonia Condesa called Ipodromo, an area surrounding Park Mexico and enclosed by a boulevard called Avenida Amsterdam. If you look at the map, it does remind you of a shape of a hippodrome. Ipodromo has the vibe of Condesa, but is a bit quieter and more peaceful. It appears to be more residential, but without losing its uniqueness. You do have quick access to all the activities around you, but get that tranquil fairy tale like feeling of an old, beautiful green city. Accommodation prices would be similar to Condesa. And this is our ranking of Mexico City neighborhoods. We hope you found it useful and that it helped you to get a better idea of where to look for accommodation when you're visiting Mexico City. To wrap up this video, we want to add that Mexico City is definitely worth visiting. It surprises you with how green and clean it is, how friendly the people are, and how cultural and rich in history and architecture it is. In our three months there, we only scratched the surface of its multiple museums, galleries, and restaurants. Let us know in the comments below which of the neighborhoods in Mexico City you like the most, and if you've been in Mexico City before, where do you think we should live next? Thank you for watching, and till next time!